Hi friends, happy spring. Today we're gonna to be going to a few different thrift shops, including one that I have never visited before. It's brand new, it opened recently, and I finally got to go. And not to be dramatic, but it is the most beautiful thrift store I've ever been to. And not just like, you know, like that it's clean, but like the actual building itself is so beautiful. So I can't wait to show you. I also found some amazing flower power stuff, which is the thing that I'm always on the lookout for. So I will show my vintage haul at the end of the video. And I'm so obsessed with florals. I have them all over my house and I want as many flowers in my life as possible. And since it's spring, I decided to try gardening and growing my own flowers for the very first time. I have gardening genes on both sides of my family. My mom and dad garden a ton, my grandma and grandpa, my oma and opa. Everyone in my family loves to garden, is great at it, and I feel like I just did not get that gene at all. But I've always had the desire to do it uh, for years, and so I feel like this is my year, I'm giving it a shot. I have had these books uh, in my life for at least like seven years now, uh, just trying to like motivate myself to do it. I've read them multiple times and I get like excited to garden and then I immediately feel overwhelmed. I don't know if anyone else feels this way, but like there's so many things about gardening that I just do not understand and so many questions that I'm constantly getting like tripped up on. Like what kind of soil do you need? What seeds should I buy? When do I plant them? Should I buy plants instead of seeds? And I just get so overwhelmed and I get like decision fatigue and then I give up. Um, but I am convinced that with practice, you can get good at anything. Um, so this year I'm doing it. I'm giving it a try. And I'm excited that Vegica sent me a free metal raised garden bed. It's a huge one, like it's eight foot by two foot. And then the configuration can change so that you can make it different sizes, which is really neat. They help eliminate weeds and that is great for me. I can't stand weeding. That is something that I really don't like to do. So let's assemble it together and see how it goes. It was really warm in Michigan in the beginning of March, and so everyone felt like it was spring, so I felt like it was time to garden, but then we got dumped down with snow, so I actually assembled most of the raised garden bed inside while it was snowing, and so now I'm bringing it out and finishing the assembling outside. And I was really happy that I was able to put it together completely by myself and I didn't need any like fancy tools. I just needed one screwdriver and then the other tool they put in the box. I decided to go with the Hergel culture method of raised garden beds to help eliminate buying tons and tons of soil. So first you have to put down a layer of cardboard which I just used stuff that was in my recycling, and then also the cardboard box that the raised bed came in. And then you add a layer of logs and sticks, and I found those from around the property. Thankfully, my boyfriend Joshua stopped by and he offered to help, which was really sweet of him, so I didn't have to lug all those logs by myself because I don't have a wheelbarrow. Next is a layer of decomposing leaves and brush, which I then had to step down on, which was fun. After that, you have to layer some compostable material, which I don't think you have to do. I mean, all this is compostable, but I wanted to add um, some stuff from around my house. So I had like fruit and vegetable scraps. I had cardboard egg cartons, toilet paper rolls, things like that. And then finally, it was time to add the soil on top, which I got this recipe. Recipe? I don't know what to call it. Mixture. Mixture. Okay. I got a mixture uh, idea from MI Gardener on YouTube. And I'll link to his videos. He is so helpful. And here is the finished raised garden bed. It looks so nice. Um, I put it right in front of my dining room so that I'll be seeing it all the time and be encouraged to come out and work on my raised garden bed. Now, I would love your help with what I should plant in here. I on purpose haven't been deciding what I'm going to put in here to avoid decision fatigue and getting overwhelmed. The few things that I've decided on growing are going to be zinnias and marigolds because I hear those are super easy. I got some herb seeds um, and if the seeds don't work, uh, I'm going to plant those inside. Um, if that doesn't work, that's okay. Then I'll just buy the actual plants. I would love to try some vegetables. I think I'm going to get a tomato plant 
see how that goes. Um, I really wanted to do strawberries, but then I heard that they're kind of hard to do. Um, so any suggestions, I would love to hear in the comments below. Have you ever used a raised garden bed? I'd love to hear what things were successful and what things weren't. If you would like to purchase your own metal raised garden bed, then I will have a link below to Vegiga's website. And if you use code EMILYRETRO, then you will get 10% off your order. Thank you so much, Vegiga, for sending this to me. I'm really excited to give it a try. What do you guys think of the raised garden bed out there, huh? You like it? They always like to sit in my desk chair because the sun hits them just right and they get to roast their rumps in the sun. You're so cute. Okay, now that we've talked about something that I'm not very good at, let's do something that is much more in my wheelhouse, which is thrifting. We're first gonna start with the most beautiful thrift store ever that I am so excited to go to, but I had no idea how pretty it was gonna be until I walked in. So it's inside of an old church and it has the most beautiful, colorful stained glass windows ever. And not only did it have that, but it also had these really awesome old candy racks that they use for holding like, you know, socks and stuff like that. I love that this gorgeous old church was repurposed into a thrift store and uh, all the money goes to a food bank and helps the homeless, which is really wonderful. Not only is the thrift shop beautiful, but they had great stuff too and amazing prices. Make sure you stay till the end of the video and I'll show you everything that I bought at the thrift store. Next, I went to a thrift store with my mom that's connected to an animal shelter and they raise money for the animal shelter. And there were kitties in the window, which made me so happy. Then on Saturday, I went to two thrift stores and luck was definitely on my side because I found some amazing items.
Okay, we're gonna go in order by the first thrift store I visited. So let's start with the church thrift store. So I got these matching pillows. They're new, they're not vintage, but oh my gosh, don't they look like a vintage floral? They remind me so much of the vintage sheets that I collect. I love the tassels. Um, I love that they're pink. I love that it's multicolor, um, so it'll match tons of different stuff. And then they have this really cool detail that there's added texture onto it, which I thought was really special. Um, I'll be honest, I absolutely do not need any more pillows, uh, but you know, sometimes something just sparks so much joy that you just can't leave it behind, and that's what this did. I think I'm gonna have to go through my pillows and maybe sell some. I've been debating about whether I should start selling things on my Etsy shop. Um, a lot of people have asked me to do that, and um, I've been very hesitant to do it just because I don't have a ton of space in my house to like house a lot of shipping supplies. Um, but I do have some vintage items that I would like to sell. Um, so if you have any interest in that, let me know. It'd be really cool to sell like my personal items that I've had in my videos and on my Instagram feed um, and know that they're going to be rehomed to people that really appreciate the vintage stuff. Okay, anyway, so I got these pillows. They were $3 a peach, piece, not peach but I like peaches. $3 a piece, so $6 for the pair. Next, this isn't as exciting probably, um, but I love the color mustard, if you can't tell. Um, and I got this hand crocheted uh, mustard scarf um, that I get to wear. And I love mustard. Mustard's my favorite because I think it's one of the few colors that goes with every season. Like I wear this mustard cardigan all the time. Um, and this is like perfect for fall, winter, and spring. And it was only a buck. The last thing that I got at that thrift store is this really cool red sweater. It's vintage. I'm guessing it's from the 80s. Um, and I'm not a huge 80s person, um, but I do love 80s sweaters. I like that they're oversized. I love that it's red because I get to wear it um, for Christmas and for Valentine's Day. It's super cozy um, and it just makes me really, really happy. Like when I looked at it, I went, oh, I want that. I don't remember what I paid for it, but I will put it up on the video. <laughs> Next, we're gonna cover the animal shelter thrift store that I went to. Um, I collect these little plastic jello molds. I have tons of green ones. I have, I think, one pink one. I do not have a yellow one, so that made me really happy. I got it for three bucks. And then I got this fabulous bag. When I grabbed it, I had no idea what it was, and I also don't care. It was in the toiletry section, and so I guessed that it was like a vintage hair dryer bag or a vintage curler bag. And so I used eBay and typed in quilted floral curler bag, and I was right. So it must have used to hold curlers. I don't know when this is from, maybe the 60s, but it is so cute. And I'm just going to use it to decorate with my house. Now the next item I already put in its spot, so let's go look. <gasps> look, doesn't this look incredible? Doesn't it look like it's always been here? It belongs here. It's like matches perfectly with the wood paneling. This has got to be 70s, right? Like this just looks very groovy 70s. I almost didn't buy it um, because I am not a chicken rooster farmhouse person, um, but I love the like gingham around the edge and I love the flowers. Um, so my plan is to cover the rooster. I'm so sorry. If you're a rooster person, please do not take this personally. So let me just like use this as an example. So I think I'm going to make this kind of like a recipe board since this is the entry to my house and it leads right into the kitchen. I thought that I could like put some cute vintage recipe cards on here. And then since it's a bulletin board, I can just put it right over there. And I don't even think you notice. Um, and then I can showcase the flowers, but then hide the part I don't like as much. Let me know what you think. Let me know uh, if you like the rooster. Uh, I would love your opinion. This was $5 and it is a dream come true. Okay, now we're moving on to the thrift stores that I went to over the weekend and I could not believe what I scored. The things that make me the most happiest are flower power items and mushroom items. I didn't get any mushroom items, don't get excited, but the flower power, I don't know, it was in the air. This is something that I have searched for online, like something that I've wanted to buy, not like the normal like hunting type of way, like actually finding in the wild while thrifting. I wanted it so bad that I was gonna buy it on eBay, but instead I found it in the wild. I found these beautiful floral photo albums that I am 
absolutely gonna actually use. This one's my favorite. Oh my word, it sparked so much joy. I went, <gasps> when I saw them, I almost died. And you know how much they were? They were 25 cents a piece. 25 cents, what is this, like 2001? I can't believe the prices and how cheap they were. Thrift stores lately, the prices have been absolutely bananas. So I was so refreshed to see how affordable they were. I actually got a total of five photo albums. So there was two floral and then there was two that were beach themed. And I was thrifting with my boyfriend and he's from Florida. And so he got so excited about the beach ones and he also spotted them first. Um, so he got those, but we're gonna use them together. And so that'll be really nice. And then the fifth one that I found, I don't know what this picture is. If you could tell me, um, that would be great. It definitely looks European. I'm guessing by the architecture, maybe like <sighs> Austria, maybe Germany or Italy. I'm seeing mountains that makes me think it's somewhere in the Alpine region. Um, so if you have any guess, I would love to know. I'm hoping that's where it is because my dream one day is to go to Austria and Germany and Switzerland. So it would be really cool if that's what this is a picture of. And then that could be a photo album for my trip. So for all five photo albums, I paid a buck 25. Then surprise, surprise, I found a very highly collectible item uh, in the wild, which I can't believe. Um, and I already own some items of this collection, but I do not own this. Uh, I found the Florida orange bird bell. Um, I already have a Florida orange bird mug. I have the orange bird piggy bank. I have two of those actually, but I don't have the bell. So this was a really awesome and surprising find. If you don't know, the Florida orange bird was a collaboration between the state of Florida and Disney. And they made this character who at the time, it was like in the 1970s, was really popular. Then he wasn't very popular and then now he has like a really big cult following he's all over the disney parks now and the original 1970s items are really collectible and i love having them in my own space it says at the bottom walt disney productions and it's just it's the cutest thing it's missing the actual bell portion so it's silent but i don't care i'm just gonna display it i paid only three dollars for this then lastly at that thrift store, this isn't a vintage item, but I think it looks really vintage. I got a corduroy pants suit. It's like a purple maroonish color, like a dark purple. And it fits me perfectly. It's actually, it's from Kohl's. And I used to work at Kohl's and I love their clothes. I'm very happy with this. It's super comfortable and it looks really groovy. And I'm excited to wear this at work. I paid $8 um, for the blazer and pant combo and I think I'm gonna wear them separately and together when I really want to do a 70s outfit. Now it's time for the grand finale, this gorgeous iron. I already have an ironing board but it does not make me happy at all and this one is beautiful. Can you even believe it's gingham, it's floral, it's orange, it's yellow, it's fantastic. It has a stain but I don't care. It shows that it's been used, okay? There was some granny that was ironing something and she was busy and that's what that stain is from and there's nothing wrong with that. So I'm gonna donate my old ironing board, which I also bought at the thrift store. I don't have enough closet space for that ironing board and so it's just been sitting out in my sewing room, not looking cute, and now I can have one that sits out that looks adorable. I'm being way more selective with the items I buy now. Um, this thrifting adventure that I went on. It kind of looks like I did it in like a one weekend, but this is the thrifting experiences that I've had over the course of the whole winter and into spring. So this has basically been the beginning of January until the end of March. So this is all I've bought. Um, I mean, maybe you think it's a lot, but for me, I'm thrifting way less. And now the only things I really buy are things that I go, <gasps> are things that really, really spark joy for me. If it's like in between, like there were things that I showed in the video that I almost bought and then I talked myself out of because I just don't have the space and I'm not gonna buy things that don't make me incredibly happy. I paid seven bucks for this. I'm the happiest girl in the whole world that she's mine. I will cherish you forever. As always, all the items that you see in this, I thrifted and I will have a breakdown of all the prices, what my total is in the description, and then I will have links to each item so that if you wanna purchase them on eBay, then you can, or if you wanna see like the Florida Orange Bird Bell, if you wanna click on the link and see 
how much they sell for on eBay, then the link will be right there for you in the description. Please let me know in the comments what item was your favorite? What would you have purchased if you were thrifting with me? And of course, please don't forget, if you know how to garden, I really want your help. Leave your suggestions in the comments below. I want to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching, friends. Uh, next month, I plan on posting a video for decorating for spring. Yay! Have a good week, friends. Bye! Uh, a new cat has entered my life. I think that's Rosie and Vera's dad. Rosie, Vera! Hello? You guys, I think this is Rosie's dad and Vera's dad. Look at the paws. You see the white socks? White socks. Rosie looks exactly like her mom, except for her white socks, which are right there on Papa. He's a cutie. He's a little more skittish. Be nice, Vera. Aw, you like your Papa.